Hello everyone and welcome to an exciting new tutorial for the Mythic Dungeons plugin. That's right, no more Mythic Mobs. Actually, we'll still do Mythic Mobs from time to time. But I, I want to move on to Mythic Dungeons. If anybody here really knows me, you know I am a massive fan of Dungeon Crawlers. And I did an overview of this plugin already. But I'm just like so excited to start doing tutorial series for this. Because it's just, it's caught my attention. And the developer provides. Like... It's, it's such a, it's a good plugin. I, I can't wait to get started with all this with all of you. So before we do get started, if you haven't already, hop on over to my Discord uh -huh. channel. Link will be in the description below. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and, uh, and get started. Now, this first tutorial isn't going to be anything super extravagant. Rather, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of uh, bounce you all into the main setup. So nothing really will be done in-game. We'll do a little bit, but not a lot, really. Uh, I'll start making future tutorials to cover more stuff as we move on. But for now, let's go ahead and just look at the files provided for us. So first thing, you're going to need to go to your plugins folder, wherever that may be located inside of your server folder, wherever that might be located. Okay, you'll, you'll have Mythic Dungeons here. And if you go inside, you'll see just a very small assortment of things. They don't really lead to much backups. Uh, doesn't lead to much. I'll explain that in a later. Global player data. Uh, another doesn't lead to much. Explain that later too. Maps. We'll explain that shortly. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like this is kind of lackluster, but you, I, I hope you'll all understand whenever we get to it. So, first thing I want to talk about is the config. Now, this is just a very basic setting of, you know, stuff that'll pretty much help your server perform better uh, ba based on limiting whatever you decide to limit. So let's talk about them. I realize there's green, you know, notations of this to kind of tell you what each one does, but I want to kind of break it down a little bit further if I can. So let's say we'll start in the general area. Max instances. For those of you who aren't aware, an instance is a basically a world generation. Uh, the way Mythic Dungeons works is it generates kind of a pseudo world, a new world for each individual instance. So that way, players aren't getting crammed inside the same dungeon over and over. Instead, it's multiple dungeons, but of the same copy. Uh, this is a very, it's a very efficient manner to make sure that everybody is able to play without, you know, having to wait hours on hours for a group of individual that might be dungeon hogging or anything like that. Um, that this is just the amount of times that dungeon can be run. Max instances is set to 10. This means you can have 10 copies of that world at one time. Uh, if you have a smaller server, you don't have as much memory, I would highly suggest setting this down to maybe like anywhere from three to maybe five. Um, if you have enough memory and you're not worried about it, 10 will be okay. This, uh, this plugin is very memory taxing whenever you have multiple worlds going because it's constantly generating new worlds, new procedures, unloading those worlds, giving rewards, spawning enemies, the, the whole deal. So it's very important to keep in mind what your server can handle. Next is the autosave interval. Um, that's pretty pretty uh, straightforward. This is how many times when you're working on a dungeon, uh, or what they call an edit mode, that it will save. Basically, if you're in the edit world for your dungeon, you won't have to save it, although I recommend saving it. Rather, your autosave interval will do that for you. By default, it's set to 300 seconds, which is five minutes. So every five minutes, you will get um, a new save and that will appear also in the backups folder here so in case you were curious what this folder actually was this is where whenever you're working on your dungeon any backups made during this autosave interval will be stored as you can see i don't have any there because i do not currently have a dungeon set up anymore but if i did that's where they would be showing up this is very useful uh, on the off chance that you maybe crashed your server uh, you overloaded something using world edit and you didn't want to, you can revert back to a previous save by just pulling one of the backups and moving it or loading it via command in game. Okay, next is the function builder item. This is quite straightforward. It's literally just an item. Uh, one thing I suggest, I think you have the option to use blocks instead of items, but I would really, really advise not to for the uh, sake of 
there is potential to glitch if your server is laggy and it'll place down the block you're holding um, as well as it might cancel out what you're trying to do because it sees you as trying to place a block instead of trying to use the function builder. So I highly recommend keeping this as an item such as like a feather, bone, blaze rod, um, prismarine shard, whatever. Basically nothing that's actively placeable. Okay, stuck kills player. What does this mean? Well, stuck often is used in plugins or games in which you end up in an out-of-bounds area and you have no means to escape. This does happen for people who love to be kind of uh, chaotic and, you know, kind of limit test the creation of developers. So uh, this is a really good option. Say you don't want the player to be killed. Or, sorry, let's backtrack a little bit. If you get stuck and you type in MD stuck, this will pretty much put you to a defined teleport location that the dungeon maker will set somewhere. Um, so by default, it's set to false. However, if you want to punish players for jumping out of the map on purpose, uh, you can make it to where it will kill the player, thus, if, uh, thus removing them from the dungeon, if the dungeon only has one life. That is a future thing we will cover in a future tutorial, because that's going to go more into the actual editing of the dungeons when we get there. Okay, so next, um, leader only queue. It's pretty straightforward, whether only the party leader is allowed to set a dungeon for the party. So if you're playing by yourself, you are not going to be a part of a party. By default, you are just kind of your own little entity, so to speak. So this would mean if you were in a party, only the leader, basically the person who created and invited everyone to the party, will be able to start it. You can switch it to false if you're with a group of friends, or if you anticipate people with being in groups of friends and you want everyone to have access to start the party. Maybe your leader AFKs and everybody's sitting there waiting impatiently because they want to play, but you have no idea when your player is going to get, uh, get back. You can set this to false. However, in most cases, I do still kind of recommend it being set to true. A good leader will check to make sure everyone's available and will also communicate whether or not they will be available. It's, it's a high standard, but I think it's very important. So ready, check on command. This is um, this is another basically addition to the leader only queue in, uh, in a way. So this will check to make sure everybody else is ready. Uh, it's really nice because what, what you could do is you could set leader only queue to false. So that way anybody can start, but keep this set to true. So that way, if anyone starts, everybody can still ready up. Uh, regardless if they're le the leader and start that way. I think this is a much more efficient and friendly method to use, so I'm actually going to go ahead and keep these settings. Ready, check, in queue. Uh, this is going to be the exact same thing. The only thing is a queue is something you get put into if you're waiting uh, on a party. So say your max instance is only set to one, uh, and there, you know that dungeon is currently in use, it'll put you in a queue and this will make sure that the people who are in the queue all have to ready up in order to move forward. Uh, another pretty helpful thing, because this means any people behind that queue could probably skip them if this queue is taking too long. Um, there's also a ready check time. This is also in seconds. I believe everything here is in seconds. So if, um, if you get hit with that ready queue, the ready check, you can pretty much, you have 45 seconds to confirm whether or not you're ready, and if you're not, you will not be put in. Um, and then I believe it should actually move on to the next party in line if you are not ready. Party finder, well, again, another pretty straightforward thing. Whether to automatically broadcast party recruitments regularly. Uh, we'll cover these bits in another tutorial. These go into the party system in this plugin that uh, I actually won't be covering in this first one. But you can kind of see there's only two options here. So if you are recruiting, there will be a command that you can type, and this will just kind of tell everybody that you are. And then this will be, uh, you know, if, if you keep broadcasting it, or I don't know, there might be an option for it. I haven't looked into it yet. Uh, it will go off every five minutes. This is probably the only one that's in minutes instead of seconds, but, you know, that's totally fair. So just something to keep in mind. And we are now done with the config. Let's go ahead and look at the next thing. So global player data. 
This isn't really anything too important that you need to keep in mind. This is just kind of the plugin's database for players who have done really anything with the plugin at all. Like, for example, this is my player UUID, unique user identifier or something like that. Um, yeah, that's, that's all this is. It's not really anything you have to worry about. Now let's look at Lang. What does Lang mean? Well, Lang means language, if you didn't already know that. Now, what does uh, what is this here? Prefix? This is any time the Dungeons plugin is activated, this is going to be the little tab that goes in front of it. For example, down here I have my own one that says Valiant Craft Chat Clear. That is because I cleared the chat already, but if I were to type MD... Um, I don't know, we'll just do something quick like loot create um, first. I don't know. So as you can see down here in purple, it says dungeons, create a new loot table first. This is the message, but this is that tag that we just read. So here is the color, which as you can see is set to a hex color, which is really cool actually uh, that that's supported. It even says right here, supports hand color codes and hex codes. So, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. And then the little tag that follows it, which is dungeons. Okay. Here's where you can change all of your messages based on the conditions of the message. So I'll let you all go ahead and read through that. They're all really straightforward, actually. Um, there's not really a whole lot that you would really need to change, in my opinion. But what I love about this plugin and what I love that the developer did is there are some plugins out there that'll have the, like, for example, the dungeons tag here in front of every single message that you will have to change. But uh, the developer was amazing and already kind of broke it down for you and fixed a lot of it up. So you have your basic tag here, which will go in front of every single message down here instead of you having to do it all individually. So big thanks to the developer for that. It makes us uh, server admins very, very happy to see something like that. Very much so. I appreciate it greatly. I hope this uh, little talking demonstration kind of helped break down the very basics of this plugin for you. Again, it's one I am super, super hyped to see, hopefully on other people's servers, and you can 100% expect to see it on my server. So thank you all so much for watching. I can't wait to see what you come up with in the future.